So I am uh, not doing the Ask a Painter live show Saturday, uh, this last Saturday, because I was traveling. I was on a plane uh, from the northeast portion of the United States. So I am uh, doing this as a special Monday night edition of the Ask a Painter live show. And I can see my monitor is already fluctuating, which is awesome. Um, so, all right, folks, we're going to recap all of last week. Um, last week was my Northeast tour. I am Nick Slavic. I am the proprietor of the Nick Slavic Painting and Restoration Company. I'm also the host of this show, Ask a Painter Live. It is a weekly live Facebook show where I use my over two decades of experience as a craftsperson and an entrepreneur, trades business owner, to answer any of your questions. And um, it's been my honor to do this show for over five years. Uh, we had our five year anniversary recently. That means I've been broadcasting this show free live every week for the last five years, 52 shows a year over five years, uh, all basically just a, a treatise, uh, an archive, a receptacle for all the things that I wish I would have had uh, when I was starting off as a business. I went through a very regressive trades business growing up. I did not make contact with the outside world until uh, much later than I should have. Um, it's very likely that I toiled in this trade trying to master the craft, trying to solve all the same business problems that everybody else solves for myself for over two decades and no more. Uh, as soon as I made contact, lots of things started changing in my life. So um, this is going to be a, a quicker show. i uh, give you a quick recap of what the hell just happened last week. Uh, it was an amazing week. So many awesome people, so many awesome events and so many realizations uh, for me as a business owner. So Let's hop into it, folks. The PCA, the Painting Contractors Association, they uh, were a large portion of what made this happen. Benjamin Moore underwrote uh, the entire Northeast tour. So I thank you. Uh, uh, I thank them for that. It was an unbelievable uh, effort that they put forward to make sure that a lot of this content can get to a lot of the bright minds in the industry everywhere. So uh, the PCA, Painting Contractors Association, they, they ran all the logistics in partnership with me and uh, again, did all the coordination for these things and made contact and made sure that these things happened. So if you guys were at a master's class, I would urge you to spread the word about what we did and what we experienced at these things. This is not normally me just regurgitating information. I do that, but I used, I used those platforms and that information to spur on conversation and get to thinking and question everything. That's sort of the through line with every single one of my master's classes, which is, this is not me saying, this is the only way, the best way, the perfect way. This is me saying, Sweet Jesus, I have tried everything. I've gathered the data. I've done as pure scientific experiments as I can. And I am here to give you a data point, a, an example, the example that I did not have. It is one data point. You can choose to use it, to not to use it, whatever you like, but it's there for you. I can't find another as thorough data point on this stuff. And I would really like to. So um, this is a dog whistle. This is a lighthouse. Uh, basically looking for other progressive, aggressive minds out in the industry. So starting last week, Saturday, I did a Ask a Painter Live on uh, some of my favorite Pratt and Lambert project uh, products. Uh, and then uh, hung out with my family uh, as best I could uh, for the rest of that Saturday. And then Sunday, uh, hung out with the family, lazy morning, gathered up all my gear. As you would imagine, I have a standard operating procedure for travel. I have a certain amount of suitcases, a certain amount of clothes. Everything's there, pro image, how's it going? Um, and then I got on a plane mid to late Sunday morning and took two flights. Uh, first one to Detroit, a uh, very short layover, and then on to uh, Vermont, Burlington, Vermont. And, you know, all the while, uh, I have a very good routine about uh, working on the things I need to work to set up a week um, that that is going to be productive. And I can happily, happily, happily uh, report that um, I have never been more free, never been more unencumbered, never been less tethered uh, to this freedom machine I'm creating. Uh, it does not mean that it is a perfect machine. It does not mean that it's reached its final state. But my company, my people. Uh, it starts with the leadership team and all the craftsmen and uh, craftspeople and apprentices. They went and produced a week last week that set an all-time record for the entire company, for the life of the company. We have never produced as many jobs um, for as many happy clients as we did that week. Now, this is coming off a couple weeks ago where we set a previous 
personal best for the entire company. So it was absolutely amazing. I could not be more proud of the people in this business. Systems and processes and benchmarks and job costing are all clinical, cold calculating tools. They're nothing without the humans there. And uh, this is a humanistic business. Uh, starts with our clients, ends up with our people, the leadership team, everybody within, and we do not win. We do not get a chance to make happy clients if we don't have happy painters. We don't have a chance to make happy painters if we don't have happy clients. So. We all of the work that's been spent into our people over the years is truly paying off. The culture of my business has never been stronger. I'm enjoying this more than I ever have. I look in the eyes and the minds of the people in this business and uh, we are doing great things. Uh, we are making truly happy people around us. And I believe we're on the path to a fully realized, professionalized company that provides the most paid, the most benefits, the best client experience, everything that we can possibly do uh, as a sort of beacon. And then one example for the rest of the trades to look upon and say, well, I feel like I wanna do some of those things too. And this may not be perfect. It may not be perfect for me, but there is one example of somebody who will readily share that stuff. And so if you do want a way forward, uh, that's a way to do it. So um, yes, my company, while setting an all-time record for weekly revenue, uh, did not need me, uh, happily to report. Uh, it's very easy. You can take that personal and say, oh, man, I thought I, I, I meant more to this company. But it's a true testament to dividing and conquering. Right people, right seats, job descriptions, deliverables. Everybody's aligned. The goals are being accomplished. And it's a very good thing to witness. And it's proof concept of all the things that I've been out there doing and saying and truly believe that will work in the trades. The trades are legitimately the Wild West and it's full of a bunch of unprofessionalized businesses. That is not a judgment call by me. Uh, I was once a single person painting business that was unprofessionalized and that in itself is not a bad thing. Uh, but I do know the result of that thing, which was I was stressing the living hell out of my family. I was making plenty of money, but I made plenty of money by working the version of two jobs. I was not smart enough to create one very good job or business for myself. I created two jobs by basically just putting 80 hours in a week instead of doing 40. So plenty of money, but I was breaking myself and I was breaking my family, which wasn't great. So it's way better to run a professionalized business, put in the hard work and legitimately the through line, besides questioning everything and starting over from scratch and not believing any of the industry norms is truly that people who win, and provide the best experience for their clients and, and, and can attract the best people, do a whole bunch of unse uh, unsexy, mundane, seemingly unimportant things consistently over and over and over and over again. So flew into um, Burlington, Vermont. I was really looking forward to this. There is no better way to start the Northeast tour than with Noah Cantor of Anthropy Painting and my favorite podcast, Advice from a Young Tradesman. Uh, truly an amazing guy, a big thinker, relatively new to the industry, questioning everything, wanting to master the craft, wanting to master business and just putting it out there for everybody for free. Again, another awesome resource. It is an amazing, amazing thing. So when a uh, long time ago on a podcast, Noah had proposed that I come out there and do a wilderness thing with him. He's an outdoor guy. I'm an outdoor guy. And of course I said, yes. Um, in conjunction with the Green Mountain Club, um, there's a guy named Lorne uh, who worked for the Green Mountain Club who kind of facilitated all this. Uh, Noah and his employee, Bender, uh, awesome human being. Uh, we all hiked about a mile into the Vermont wilderness um, into a sleeping shelter and a brand new privy, a uh, latrine toilet in the wilderness. And I sanded down with, with the goal, I should say, of applying some new stain to these buildings to keep them up. The sleeping shelter was from 1963 and had been maintained very well. I've seen tons and tons and tons of people carving their names up there, which is awesome to see all the history. We got to read some of the log book. And of course I threw a face sticker along with Noah's stickers in there, uh, in that shelter. That'll be archived for time and eternal. And they built a brand new composting. Well, I shouldn't say that. Uh, it's a type of composting privy, but it's a special kind. And I'll, I'll, I'll butcher the name if I say it, but I sanded it down. I found a rock in some festool sandpaper that Noah brought with. 
And I sanded the outside of this brand new wood privy down to promote adhesion and an absorption of the stain. I applied two coats of uh, stain to it along with Bender and Noah. Uh, also the, um, the sleeping shelter. And then we packed up and went out. It was about a half a day operation. And then uh, we proceeded to have an insanely Vermont experience of going to a crystal clear spring slash creek slash waterfall, rocks, cascades, beautiful green and blue pools, people jumping, people swimming, uh, you know, the, the crackers, the cheese, the meats, had a couple of uh, Vermont beers there. Uh, and then we took a countryside drive around and they kind of showed me uh, the stuff that Vermont has to offer, which is which is just amazing. Uh, yeah, we had an insanely great night. We met up with another painter, had um, had dinner on the wharf up here of Lake Champlain, which is an amazing place. Uh, this is this is all um, post seated by a wonderful, wonderful dinner that Noah and I had together my first night in, in Vermont. We went to the patio of the Hotel Vermont, the, the, the insanely beautiful hotel that he recommended. We went out on the patio, had an awesome meal uh, overlooking Lake Champlain and the city and the lights and everything like that and uh, really caught up, shared some perspective and uh, some visions for the future. And uh, yeah, nothing gets me fired up like that. It makes me want to just open up the laptop and do business right away. So uh, the next day, uh, Noah found a beautiful, beautiful meeting room, uh, just uh, wonderfully appointed. And we had a whole bunch of people there for the first day of master's classes, which was in Burlington. And the master's classes that we did uh, were a couple new ones, actually, uh, ones that I've been working on for a while. But uh, I finally put together in its final form the um, industry myths master's class. So basically all the things that everybody thinks are true. I love to poke and I love to question. So I'll actually present arguments uh, for and against these things, whether they're true or not, based on data, experience, stuff from my own company and using some first principles reasoning and other things as to why some things that we all believe to be true may not be true. And that why maybe some things that we believe to be true might be true. You know, it first addresses uh, in, in, I have a, insanely rigorous two-part series on apprenticeship, which is basically the solution to there's no good people out there. And I basically break down through data and experience and reasoning why that's absolutely not true. I mean, legitimately, everybody's knee-jerk reaction right now is there is, there is no good people out there. And statistically and logically, that is silly. It's absolutely silly. There's never been more humans on this planet. In fact, the millennials who are all now 18 to 40, 20 to 40, are as large a generation as the baby boomer generation, plus or minus a million. So if you ever wanted to hire people, they're out there right now. And I show you through data and experience how we can find as many good people to work in our company uh, whenever we want. And that's, um, that's a large conversation right now. Uh, and it's one that I love because when everybody believes something to be true, when everybody universally knee jerk reacts in a certain way, and when everybody utters the sentence, this is all we've always done, that is ripe for blowing up and starting over. So if you guys are interested in any of that stuff, I have a link in the show notes. If you want to see a master's class, uh, you go for it. Um, so interesting, interesting information about Burlington, Vermont. All the stereotypes are true. Uh, Vermont is an insanely wonderful place, and the stereotypes are true in the most wonderful, magical way possible. Uh, nothing disappointed. Everything was as you thought, and even more. And I could live in Vermont. I could live in Burlington very easily. I could find myself disappearing there. It is a more mountainous, more wildernessy, more crunchy, more intentional version of Minnesota in a lot of ways. And this is not me talking bad about Minnesota. This is me talking very great about Burlington, Vermont very interesting group of people in this master's class. Um, they are largely, I, I've never really got a data set like this before, an experience like this. Largely, the people have never heard of me. They've never heard of Ask a Painter. They've never heard of the PCA, but, and they've never really talked to other painters, but they all job costed for the most part, which is very, very interesting. So, sorry, I feel a sneeze coming on here. Um, which is a very interesting data set for me because those things are not usually mutually ex exclusive. Um, usually, 
people who have never made contact with another painter don't normally have a rigorous background in job costing. So I was very curious to plumb the depths of this and proof positive that this is one of the greatest groups I've ever given a master's class to or interacted with in a master's class is that my master's class is normally somewhere between two and three hours. We went two hours over on that because there was so much discussion, so much questions that I about three quarters of the way through the master's class, I opened up my Google Drive and we just started showing examples of stuff and sharing stuff. And it was absolutely wonderful. Uh, Eric, uh, Erica Goodman, Noah Cantor uh, is his name, K-A-N-T-E-R. <coughs> uh, if you're looking for Noah's stuff, his painting company is Nth Degree Painting, uh, the letter N-T-H. Uh, and his podcast is Advice from a Young Tradesman and uh, you will not be disappointed. Um, in many ways, Noah is a much more thoughtful version of me. Where I'm good off the hip, Nora puts a ton of thought before he speaks, which I envy uh, very much so. So, all right, that day was absolutely amazing. Tons of, um, uh, tons of perspective shared. And uh, again, I almost feel self-conscious about these master's classes because yes, it feels like Nick's taking a road show out and he's gonna share a whole bunch of data and it's gonna be a lecture. But honestly, I'm taking more notes than the people who watch my master's classes. If, if any of you have seen me in a master's class, either on my phone or in my uh, paper notebooks there, uh, as people are saying things and sharing perspective, I'm taking notes as well. And I honestly feel like at this point, I'm, I'm getting a lot out of these. And I sometimes feel like I'm getting much more than the people who come to these things. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. Normally, I get the analogy of drinking from a fire hose when people see a lot of that stuff. So um, it's a really, really interesting thing. I, I, I literally machine gun people with data, charts, perspective, census stuff, stats, experience, and real takeaway stuff. None of this just rah, rah, wave your fist kind of stuff. Like I show you exactly how we do some things. And a lot of the times it's overlaid on the financials and the experiences of uh, the people in my company. So um, as I do with these uh, tours, uh, I will usually travel that evening as close as I can to the next day's stuff. So I don't have to get up and, and do a whole bunch of traveling. So um, basically uh, I drove to the Boston area uh, real close to Boston. We were in Newton and good friend of mine, Nigel Costello, owner of Catch Light Painting, uh, hosted us at his shop, which he had did in the last Northeast tour, which is absolutely wonderful to, to be back in that area. And uh, again, amazing turnout. I think we had 18, 20 people there for that one. All insanely um, uh, wonderful, wonderful contractors. Many watching Instagram right now, as I'm seeing. Uh, and it was a, God, the, the perspective and the data and the sharing and the, uh, I was complimenting people in the room in Boston, how I've listened to their podcasts and I was inspired by them. And uh, it was truly wonderful. Uh, some, some familiar faces, some new faces, some people I've known from internet land forever, and then finally got to press the flesh in person. And the perspective was just awesome. So we, we went through my estimating uh, master's class and my standard operating procedures master's class, which I believe was the first time I've ever presented that publicly to anybody. So I basically show you how I've created a company where I can leave for a week using standard operating procedures and accountability to make sure that this thing doesn't light on fire and to make sure I'm not uh, the linchpin of the whole organization. And uh, the secret is, uh, unsurprisingly, is human accountability. It's not necessarily the actual standard operating procedures. So I overlay all that stuff on and show it's how it's all holistic and kind of interconnected like that. So that was an absolutely wonderful day. Again, I met some people that were so inspiring there. And I got to see people that have inspired me in the past. And it was a truly amazing day. I love the discussion. I love the perspective. Um, I truly love getting to know people in this industry because you're met with a lot of people who do interesting things and you'll never be able to tell by looking at them most of the time. So a lot of the conversations go, hey, I'm Nick. I do this. This is where I'm from. This is what the goals are. Somebody else will say, hey, I'm Tom. I'm from this place. This is what the goals are. And uh, what they say brings up a lot of questions. You're like, oh, really? That's a very interesting thing you just said. Tell me more. And you start digging into each other's experiences and past and the way of thinking. And pretty soon you're, you're met with a lot of experiences that expand the way you think about the business. 
and call into question a lot of our limiting beliefs and fear-based statements and things like that. So um, I truly love the perspective and the, and the mind expanding version of getting out there and seeing other painters. That was a wonderful day. Um, so after Boston, I traveled to Westchester County, New York. I think this was uh, Bedford or New Bedford there uh, to my friend Genesis's shop. Genesis is somebody I've known in the industry a long time. Uh, it was this this part of the country has such a holdout of great painters. This, I've, I've traveled here numerous times. It's been wonderful, wonderful, wonderful uh, to, to see all these people again and also meet some new people. So um, we did uh, Modern Apprenticeship One. Uh, the first part of that of solving the labor crisis and finding as many people as you want. Uh, and then we did job costing and industry benchmarks, which is awesome. So again, so many good people in that class. Uh, Rodrigo, a good friend of mine, got to see him. Uh, I look up to him in the industry a great deal and I'm inspired by what he's doing. Uh, we got to see Ray Ronnie. Uh, he sent an employee as well. Uh, Genesis was there, uh, all sorts of familiar faces. And it was legitimately just a wonderful, thoughtful crowd of people, uh, people who have been in the industry decades and decades and decades, uh, constantly questioning, constantly looking around for, uh, for data. Again, I got to see um, a whole bunch of interesting uh, versions of contractors and what they do. After that, uh, I actually was invited to Ray Ronnie's house with a bunch of other contractors, and they had uh, some homemade Mexican food in the backyard. They gave us a beekeeping uh, demonstration, which is awesome. There were people there taking apart the, the beehives and stuff and showing us the queens and everything else. Uh, and then from there, uh, I went to New Jersey. And uh, invite from um, some of the most amazing people I've ever met, which is uh, Dave Scaturo and his wife and the Kuipers, uh, Maggie and Matt Kuiper of Harpeth Painting. Uh, they actually flew in from Tennessee to see the next day's master's classes, which is Modern Apprenticeship 1 and very special. The second part of that as well, all in a day. And uh, these are people who had uh, the Harpeth, uh, Harpeth Painting has uh, hosted me in Tennessee. They were my hosts there. And it was the first time I've met them. I've seen them. Uh, I've seen them around. I know of them. I know their names, but we never got to go deep. And I met a power couple, the Elliots. I met the other power couple, the Kuipers. And if you have not met either of those people, um, do yourself a favor. Uh, they, they, will, uh, they will expand what you think of uh, as good in this industry and they're inspiring and honestly just some of the most genuine greatest human beings i've ever met not even just in this industry anywhere else dave scaturo is amazing he's one of the first people who uh, i've ever met in the industry put his arm around me early and uh, legitimately if you don't know dave force of nature big thinker big business runner and doesn't suffer fools and that's why i love him uh, so we had a great dinner. Uh, one of Dave's friends, uh, a marketing guru was at the dinner, uh, the Kuipers and us. And we had this great uh, meal at an Italian restaurant kind of by a river uh, in New Jersey. And it was amazing just to sun was setting, downloading information uh, and just sharing, sharing thoughts, getting ready for the next day. Next day, another awesome group of contractors probably the most diverse group of contractors I've ever met. You know, the Kuipers came up who run a large uh, commercial firm from Tennessee. There was Dave who runs a monster commercial and industrial firm all over the East Coast, uh, Upper Seaboard, Upper Eastern Seaboard. There was a brother team who runs a paint business in Pennsylvania, but their father operates a location in Florida and they readily share and collaborate and flex their labor between the two. We had, uh, we had, a, we had a three decade experienced master craftsman uh, looking to uh, constantly push the limits of his company. Um, we had an employee, uh, employees of, um, of Dave's company, Alpine Painting. Um, yeah, it was, it was an amazing, it was an amazing group of people, such an eclectic group of people, but the, the knowledge and things that was exchanged between all this stuff was amazing. Um, the last two locations, uh, I was blessed by Joe Delafave, a big shot from Benjamin Moore sitting in and uh, checking out the master's classes. So Joe, again, uh, before he should have spent a lot of time with me at these industry events when I was just a nobody house painter showing up at these things and we formed an awesome relationship and it was, uh, it was wonderful to share. But so the last day of master's classes, Matt, modern apprenticeship one and modern apprenticeship two, I've been giving these for two or three years now. And my theory three years ago was. I don't think we're in a labor crisis, honestly. I, when people's knee-jerk reaction is there are no good people out there, 
I just don't believe it. The data doesn't show it. The experience doesn't show it. I believe we have to change the way we think about it. I believe we have to be intentional and be willing to put forth effort towards it. We're willing to pay money for painting leads and for acquiring clients and putting effort into acquiring clients, but yet we are not interested in putting money or effort towards acquiring the people that we'll spend the rest of our lives doing this craft with. And that is very disappointing. So what I propose is a simple sort of notion, which is stop doing whatever you're doing and what everybody else is doing and do something different. Put different ads in different places, attract different people, onboard them a different way, train them a different way and try to keep them a different way. And yes, it may not be perfect, but in the absence of any other options, that's what I found. If you put the same old Craigslist ad out of you must lift 50 pounds, one to three years of experience, 14 to $20, pay based on experience, driver's license must show up on time 40 hours a week. That is an uninspiring, dull ad, and it will not attract any people you're looking to attract. If you put that out now, if you say, I have done everything I can possibly do, I put that out on Indeed where the kids are, I put it out on Facebook jobs, I put it out on Craigslist and ZipRecruiter, and guess what? I got nothing back. Yeah. That's exactly what everybody's been doing for 30 years. Congratulations. And you know what? It hasn't been working for 30 years that well. There are no, statistically, there basically are no experienced painters who will probably meet your core values out there. Now, I deal in hyperbole, obviously. There are awesome painters out there. But if you're looking to find a reliable supply that will always find you in an easy way with putting no effort forth, uh, you're going to be pretty disappointed. And I would not expect that to happen. Now, this is not just painters. This is the trades. I talked to my accountant. My accountant has problems finding CPAs to work in their firm. And that is a very well-paying job that demands a high education, high professionalism. You know what? Everybody's finding, uh, finding it difficult to find people. It is the economy right now. Yes, the economy is great. We have relatively low unemployment. But you know what? Everything else is an excuse. If you really want this to be done, you'll get it done. My theory is that a professionalized painting business will not have problem finding this and when I, finding labor. When I travel the country and I talk to my comrades in, in the trades and other businesses too, the professionalized businesses, honestly, yes, they have to put forth effort. It's not easy. It doesn't land on their lap, but they know what it takes to run a professionalized business and find as many leads and labor as they want. And you know what? You can extrapolate that out to every business. The, the trades and painting is not that unique and that we're going to be the only ones that uh, that can benefit from that. This is what real businesses do. And the path to professionalization is sometimes boring, sometimes exhilarating, filled with unsexy, mundane, just tiny little weird things that seem insignificant. But when you do them consistently and put them all together, they produce an amazing result. And so that is kind of my thrust going forward, which is, I keep getting that data point driven home, which is the more professional you are, the less questions you have about all the things we question. Uh, some of my uh, job costing, benchmark, estimating master's classes, SOP master's classes, basically all kind of surround and, and circle around the idea that if you start with job costing, you get some job descriptions, you get a pay scale, you get some deliverables going, you get an employee manual, you get a vision for the company, you start tying those incentives together. A lot of the questions that most people have about painting businesses are kind of answered. How do you schedule? How do you estimate? What do you charge for X? Where do you find good people? Uh, how much is a paint business supposed to make? All these things, all these things, when you hire a production manager, when you hire an admin, when you hire an estimator, what is good? What is fast? What can you expect people to do in your company? All that's kind of answered by the path to professionalization. So at the end of the New Jersey master's class, again, I was treated to one of the greatest nights ever. Uh, went out uh, with Dave Scaturo and the Kuipers. And again, wonderful, wonderful um, dinner. We had some Wagyu steaks. And then we went to a speakeasy and we really downloaded some information and over a whole bunch of smoky old fashions and espresso vodka and a bunch of other stuff, we had a great night. <laughs> and I cannot wait. Uh, I cannot wait to do that again because I walk away from that stuff expanded and altered. And I come back here with a different perspective, a different thinking about what it is to be a father, a husband, a friend, business owner, a craftsman, all that stuff. 
And uh, boy, talking to other painters is inspiring. And uh, yeah, I am eternally grateful for that stuff. And I am permanently changed by those things. So again, yes, lots of flowery talk, lots of stuff, but it always takes me a few days to download from this stuff. I have my notes. I have the things I have the, uh, the, the things that I write down as ways forward as here are some things I've gathered data on and experience on. And I feel like I have enough to act on them and move forward, both in my personal life and professional life. And it is wonderful. It's a wonderful thing. And I'm glad I can use these master's classes as vehicles for this. So if you guys want to see me, if I want to see you, if we want to get together and do some mind expansion through this stuff and sharing some perspective and have an exchange of this knowledge, uh, you're going to get some chances. Um, there is uh, there's a link in the show notes on Facebook. Uh, go there if you want to see the schedule. But basically, I am headed uh, to Georgia. I'm headed to Rhode Island. I'm headed to Pennsylvania. I'm headed to San Rafael, California. I'm headed to my friends at Surf Prep. Surf Prep, medium squishy. I'm headed down there. Uh, we are working on uh, what well, Nashville is going to happen again with the Kuipers, which I cannot wait and um, not solidified yet, but we're working on a return trip to Brazil uh, later this fall. So new master's classes are getting added uh, every week. Those are the ones that are kind of on the books. There's a whole bunch more that we're working on to try to solidify. If you want a master's class in your area, all you got to do is raise your hand. Uh, somehow get a hold of me through a DM, Instagram and Facebook or uh, email me nick at nickslavic.com and we can basically set it up. We have a process uh, to find some underwriting for it. Uh, if you want a host or if you want one in your area, we can find hosts, we can find underwriting. I have all the topics, we can all set it up. We just need willing participants in this whole thing and we will figure it out. So um, I think that's it folks. I think that's it. Flew out very, very early Saturday morning, got back with the family and had one of the greatest days ever. It was the most bestest day ever to return to your family. It was my wife's birthday. Uh, sadly, one of my uh, employees is getting deployed with the Air Force. I could not make that party because I was flying home and uh, it was my wife's birthday that day. But um, we'll get together with him. Uh, he's one of my most senior craftspeople and we love him dearly. Um, so we went to, oh, what did we do? We went to go see our new little puppy, Sig. Uh, we're, we're, we're getting a tiny little Brittany Spaniel. And we went down about 45 minutes away to go pick him from a whole litter. I think there were 10 male puppies. We got first pick. So we grabbed, uh, we grabbed the chubbiest, chunkiest, weirdest looking colored puppy on there, a uh, little yellow collar. And uh, we picked him and we will probably go get him in another three or four weeks and permanently make him a part of our family. Uh, and then on our way back, we found a blues festival with a bunch of live music and food trucks. So we stopped there and did that. And then we came back to our farm and uh, we had an amazing bonfire out on the patio overlooking the Slavic farm, uh, the marsh, the pond, the woods, and just amazing. So again, if you have to, if you have to get back uh, to your family and decompress, my God, that's a good way to do it. So I realize I'm losing my light. The Facebook feed is getting a little dark on there. So um, all right, everybody, that's it. Uh, Painter Terminator, Sig is adorable. Yes. And uh, the people in my company make fun of me because once in a while I complain about a dog on an estimate because they like chewing me up, they bite us, they pee down estimator Andy's boots. So I kind of like to say, listen, I'm a dog person, but uh, why don't you put your dog in the old garage or a bedroom while we do this estimate here? It doesn't feel like it's adding a lot of value to this. I like dogs, people. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a pet person. We have cats and stuff like that. But um, I am truly a pile of mush. Uh, around that little puppy. And I can't wait to get him here and make him part of our family. So uh, it's very likely that in the corner of the war room, there will be a beautiful, soft, little fluffy dog bed for a little baby sing over there. So um, looking forward to that. Uh, Ask a Painter Live. Uh, we'll probably do one again this Saturday. Uh, I have a couple weeks off. But we got to do some pretty intense uh, training um, in our, in our company here, uh, for some very specific things. Uh, I'll get some time uh, tomorrow. I think I'm actually going to try to attempt to make it to every single job site we have and deliver new uniforms, uh, hand out some ice cold Gatorades, uh, see everybody. Cause again, I miss my people when I'm gone for a week and I kind of want to get out there and just make sure I press the flesh with everybody. And uh, I always love those days where I load up like three meals in my thing, a cooler full ice cold Gatorade and just hit the bricks and try to round robin every single one of the job sites in a day. Uh, to keep the culture moving in the company. And uh, these people are doing amazing work. We've been on 
weeks and weeks of 90 degree weather and uh, these people are breaking themselves and it doesn't go unnoticed. So, all right, folks, thanks to the PCA. Again, this is a dog whistle. This is a lighthouse. We dog whistle to other bright minds, big thinkers, progressive, aggressive, uh, craftspeople and entrepreneurs. This is a lighthouse in the middle of Lake Superior, and it's just attracting the people who are looking for something different. And it's out there. It may not be for everybody, but um, if you like Ask a Painter, you will love the PCA. Every single person, including Dave Scaturro, who uh, who is one of the first people to ever put their mind, their hands around me in this industry, I met through the PCA. And it was only because somebody dragged me kicking and screaming into a trade association, which, oh, fine, we'll go sit there and do this uh, meet and greet, you know, this, this thing where all you do is just share platitudes and small talk, which is absolutely not my thing. But when I got there, my mind hurt for a few days after I experienced my first exposition, my first expo in the PCA, where about, I can't remember if there was like five or 600, maybe even 700 people there. And they were all people like the Kuipers and the Ellis's and, uh, and the Scaturos and the Cantors and everybody else I met there. So um, I would urge you, please get connected. If nothing else, listen, the PCA has a membership fee. All right. If you pay that membership fee, your life isn't going to be changed. You must do something with it. It's the people that membership fee opens the door to everything else, the content, the resources, all the people gather around there to do great things in this industry. Over the next couple of years, you're going to see some major, major things happening. Jason Paris is at the helm of the PCA. I'm his right-hand man for now. Hopefully, I will I will take over his uh, initiatives and uh, his spot in the organization as chair, uh, willing a vote of the board afterwards. We can continue this, and there are going to be major major things coming uh, for this whole industry. And uh, thank you all for watching. Thank you to the PCA. Thank you for Benjamin Moore for underwriting the Northeast tour. Link to the uh, rest of uh, my dates, my solidified dates there. And like I said, if you want to host one of these things, so we can share some data and perspective. Um, raise your hand. DM me. Uh, message me. Somehow. Email me. Nick at NickSlavic.com. And let's get it done, people. Thank you for taking some family time on a Monday night. I could not bring myself to do this Saturday because it was 92 degrees and my loving family was standing there waiting for me and uh, I had to have some family time. But thank you all for taking family time tonight in order to do this. So thanks, everybody. Have a good week and we'll see you Saturday.